Welcome guys! Today it's time to talk about Season 3 of the Forza RC. What went wrong? What went right? What can we do to improve the whole tournament? To all of you who don't know that much about it, I'm just giving you short information that after Season 2 um, the hosts of the season changed. So we went from the ESL to Gfinity and yeah this came with lots of changes regarding rules, information policies, marshalling and so on and so on. So that's what I'm going to talk about today and yeah I hope this is helpful for everybody. But let's start with the New York Invitational which was held in April. So most of you guys who are watching right now probably know about the New York Invitational. They had 18 players um, who were invited to drive the Invitational tournament and in the end it was lightning to win the trophy, to beat Leitch. This really looked like a step forward, you know, when we talk about the production value of the stream, which just looked amazing. Those videos they did, I was able to drive a real Porsche, we did those interviews in Jeeps, so you could really see there was a lot of money just um, used for this stream, for this tournament, which was amazing. They had Golden Boy, they had Renee again commentating, and they also did a good job. So overall, it just seemed improved, it seemed better. Besides, we've been introduced to a new tournament system, to new marshals, to new officials and yeah, we had a players dinner and so on. So yeah, it really seemed like they care for us and it was just a good feeling as a player to see probably heading towards the right direction uh, when we talk about racing esports. So um, thumbs up for this event, definitely. When we talk about the first big problems of um, the Nurk Invitational, then we're definitely talking about the tournament format. Um, the qualifying, the marshalling, and so on and so on. That was no problem at all, because um, this New York Invitation was hauled to see problems and yeah, use those problems to improve the system for future seasons. But the biggest problem now is that most of those failures were just taken to the new season 3. But what do I mean by that? What do I mean with problems um, regarding the tournament system and so on? So this will be my first big topic in this video. Here we go. The whole tournament is just as good as the racing is. So that's one reason why I'm picking this topic um, as like the first topic. And of course, because two days ago we just had um, the first weekly final and it's just pretty fresh in my mind. So let's start. So, for the racing, we had 24 players invited to this tournament, 24 players who um, were good in the rivals, and they were put into two groups of 12. Um, the system there was to have a random grid order um, for the first races, for the two semi-final races, random grids, that's it. And then for the final, they just took the semi-final points and those races from both groups and created the starting grid order because of this. But there are many reasons why this system is just not working. Just imagine, someone is starting from the 11th position or let's say the 9th position in both races or something like this. Um, and like the best position he can get, because the races are short, is position let's say 5, 4 or 6. And then there's someone just starting from 1st and 2nd and 3rd all the time and he's winning those races, he's in the top three all the time. And then he just has this big advantage for the final races. He's not getting overtaken because at the back there is the carnage. And the guy at the back, he's just losing all the time because he doesn't have a chance to actually get rid of his disadvantage from the first race. He's just picking this disadvantage into the next round. And yeah, there's no sense at all. Two days ago in this tournament I was starting from 5th and 7th for example, while there were others who were all, always starting in front of me. In the end they had more points than me and in the final they just started from the first positions. In the final my lap times were always like half a second, maybe one second faster than their lap times, but there was no chance for me to catch up in those short races. So if you are unlucky in the semi-final or like, let's say in the round before, you can, yeah, you can, you can quit like probably Hysterical did when he saw the system because he had like 12 points in the semi-final but was qualified for the final. So yeah, this really needs to be improved. The only way to have a fair starting grid is by having a qualification before the races. And this is so easy right now after the new esports update. 
I don't really get the reason why they're not using this esports update for um, getting the starting grid, for, for having a fair starting grid. I mean, just have this qualification pre-stream, like we had at the end of Season 2 um, of the Forza RC. And that was even more difficult because we had to do some formation laps before the races and so on. And now the host or the admin is just taking a pic with his phone and he can sort the field, the group, by, by this lap. And it's, it's so easy. And yeah, it doesn't take so much time. So just have a qualification pre-stream and all is good. This two lap qualification system is definitely enough. Sure, the qualification will be very important. But that's how it is. You want to have the fastest guys in front. And trust me, there are many people messing up this one lap. So there are still differences in the starting grid. But you just don't have someone in the lead who was lucky twice or something else. And now they want to use the tournament points to set the starting grids for um, the new rounds. For um, um, week 2 and 3 or let's say yeah, respectively 3 and 4. Um, this is the same problem. People who've been lucky in the semi-final, they won the races in the final. And now they are always in the lead and it's easy for them. So once lucky in the beginning, you just take this advantage through the whole series. And the other guys, even the new guys who didn't qualify um, um, in the beginning, they just they just have no chance anymore because they always start at the back if they use this, uh, this system. They probably can't change it now. It's understandable. That's um, completely understandable in my opinion, because the rules are just made. But please, for the final, for the final of season three, don't use this point system to set the starting grid. Just think about Davy's skills at the New York Invitational. He was second to last in the qualification, and then in every single race, he had to start from the last position, because. Um, for the first race, they, they did some kind of qualification lab, yes. But then afterwards, it was just um, taken by the lobby points again, the tournament points. So once a disadvantage, you always had this disadvantage. So that's why Zermatt, Chemical, Davy, me and so on and so on. We were just standing at the back all the time because the carnage was mid-pack. We were behind and yeah, there were crashes all the time. And there's just no chance for the guys at the back to get a better position, especially in those short races. And especially for those races who are not going to be streamed like the semi-final races. Um, it's so easy to just set a two laps qualification. There is no pressure of time. It's probably just taking 10 more minutes and you have a fair starting grid. But enough for this topic, guys. I think you know what I mean now. Um, let's head to the next one. So let's keep on talking about race specific things, just like the length of the races. The races need to be longer. Um, just take a look at the latest um, weekly final. The stream was going for 2 hours 30 I think and we raced something like 18 laps maybe. So that was something like 25 minutes of racing and 2 hours of talking and advertisements, commercials and so on. So, you know, most of those cars, they still had some fuel in their tank, so the races could have been longer. At the moment, we really have to look out for um, the fuel tanks of those cars, unfortunately. Quick stops are no option for competitive racing at the moment, because there's this pit lane bug, you know, when the car is swerving, when it's um, driving like a snake in the pit lane. Um, that's a bug, and just... Just think of um, the possibility like someone is in the lead with one second and then he's got this buck and then he's just losing the race and he didn't do anything. And please don't tell me something about realism like oh the pit crew is also making mistakes in the Formula 1. No, this is no option at the moment. But this is more addressed to um, turn 10 probably to just um, yeah keep on the development of the game. But in Forza 6 it's probably not changing anymore so... Let's hope this bug is not um, active anymore in Forza 7. The next topic I want to talk about now is the marshalling in between the races, after the races, which is actually non-transparent and disproportionate in my opinion. We know, while we are racing, there are like two or three marshals in our lobby who are checking out um, the races and then they decide if there was something illegal like shortcutting or wrecking. 
And afterwards, sometimes people get five or 10 seconds um, penalties off their final race time. And in pretty difficult cases, um, they can also disqualify someone, but that didn't happen yet. The problem with this live marshalling is we don't know when we get penalties or why we got penalties and we can't discuss it with those marshals afterwards. In previous seasons, especially in season two, the marshalling um, took longer, like one or two days after the races and then we had the official race result, um, which was also not perfect, but the admins had more time to really like look into the race incidents and take a look in the replay like if someone was really steering into the other person or if it's just an accident or if it was shortcutting all the time on purpose and so on and so on. So like th the purpose was investigated in a better way, I think. But there we also couldn't discuss the decisions um, with marshals. So it was also some kind of non-transparent, but I think um, they explain it a bit better. And in my opinion, the penalties um, fit better to the actual race situations when they just said, okay, you're losing two or three positions now instead of this five or 10 seconds rule. The problem with those five and 10 seconds penalties is just, um, let me tell you an example. Someone is just dive bombing into corner one. He's winning like two or three positions and then he gets a five seconds penalty. But because of those three positions, his race is just better and he's probably gaining more than five seconds. This penalty is just worth it then, you know? Hey, I'm wrecking people and I'm, yeah, I'm faster by that. So um, that's a big problem. And the other one is that someone is just crashing like two or three guys. Every single one of them is just destroyed. Um, they're damaged. I, I had this incident in the weekly final. This person gets five or 10 seconds and, and like three three people just, just lost the race because of him. Um, I really think we need harder penalties for them. Like, yeah, let them miss one race, you know? Or um, say, well, you're last in this race and, and, and you're banned for the next one. Stuff like this. So we really, really need to think about um, a different marshalling system. But I really want to hear your opinion about it because it's actually a very difficult one. The next topic I was thinking about for a longer time is the information policy of the Force RC officials. In the course of the season, even before, the rulebook went through so many minor changes, um, which were not communicated at all. Some days before the tournament started, um, some tracks and car combinations were changed, they were deleted, some new came into the tournament. Some of those changes were for the good, like Nobody wants to drive the Porsche 962 on Le Mans Lassade, for example. Um, that's a good change, but please just tell us uh, when you change something big like this. And this is only one example. Small scale points like starting grid order, amount of laps, amount of rounds, stuff like this, you know. This has all been changed without telling anyone, except you're taking a look into the rulebook all the time to see what is happening. Why are we just talking about the starting grid order? No, Johnson, not again, this topic, we had this earlier. Um, the rulebook says, for week one, the starting grid will be random, and in the next weeks, it's going to be the accumulated points. But now, you guys just took um, the semi-final points to sort the final grid order for week one. The rulebook doesn't say anything about it, so why? The next subject I want to talk about is the information policy for externals, for people who don't take part in this tournament but want to be informed about it. There was already a handful of people who asked me um, about leaderboards, about the rivals leaderboards and the races leaderboards. I'm talking about the accumulated points at the moment, not in-game. So people who also don't have the game but want to be informed about it. At the moment, the only way to inform yourself about the tournament is signing in at this Forza page of Gfinity to find it. I don't think this is the best way to have like a good communication with the whole gaming community, with the whole racing esports community. So people who just want to see what's happening there and, and don't have the game. Um, yeah, we also have this Forza RC account on Twitter. Um, they announce um, some short information sometimes, like the top 10 or 
um, the race results, like the final results. But no overall standings, nothing. You have to sign in. So yeah, I don't really know if this is the way we have to go. Besides, this Twitter account of the Force RC really feels like some kind of date schedule at the moment. Um, it, it's just about, hey, don't forget to set your time in the Rivals leaderboard at the moment. Or, don't forget to tune in, the racing action starts in some minutes. Why not tagging some drivers who are pretty active on Twitter, you know, who, who can create stories for them. Um, who are sharing clips and so on. So, like, that there's a bigger exchange between, like, the Forza RC as um, like the head of the whole um, tournament and and like the drivers, the community, even people just just talking about it, give them a chance to to shine for a second. Um, they they shared like one or two community videos by Super GT and me. That's cool, but I think yeah, this need to be more. Last but not least, guys. Let's talk about the most discussed topic, the overall tournament system. In the beginning of the tournament, when everything was announced, it was meant to be as some kind of a dual system. We had the rivals path and we had a races path. So it was good for rivals experts and tournament racing experts. That's the theory about it. But... Something like a rivals expert or race expert doesn't exist in the world of Forza Motorsport. Sure, there are some people who just prefer time trialing or racing. But in the end, the people who set the fastest lap times are always the ones winning the tournament races because they're just the fastest guys. You can't win against a person who's just one second faster than you on the track just with racing skills. Even if this person is like doing one or two mistakes, this person is still winning because um, it's so much faster. Let's say this dual format was actually well intentioned. So people could just do what they want to, like what they prefer, doing the rivals or the race path. But now it just turned into a time trial tryhard tournament, uh, which should have been a racing tournament, unfortunately. 50 people qualify over the rivals path and 50 people qualify over the race path. The problem is now that all good racers, or let's say most of them, let's say 80% of the good guys are just doing the rivals qualification because it's probably very easy for them to get into the top 50. Um, they're just doing the rivals and they don't care at all about the racing. And that's why the racing just seems like some kind of B path, you know, like, like some kind of um, loser's bracket or last chance qualifier. In the beginning, those races were supposed to be as some kind of first come first serve tournament. You had 192 participants, which just signed up early enough to be part of it, and then also 100 standby participants. But then they changed it and let the standby participants in the race, which was a very good change. Um, but it didn't work because there were just too many people wrecking each other or like having no professional behavior when it comes to racing. And yeah, actually you could have seen that in advance because there are not many people in this community. Let's say there are 100 people who have a normal behavior on the track and the rest just doesn't have the skill to handle this race situation. Especially when you switch off the racing line two days before the tournament starts. It could have worked though, with one easy change, switching off the collisions for the first rounds. Um, those races are not be streamed or something, um, nobody's seeing that and it would be so easy to just sort out like the bad guys from, from the good drivers, from, from guys um, with some speed, you know, with some track knowledge. Because of this first come first serve, everybody could just sign up and like, oh yeah, I'm a Call of Duty player, you know, but hey, Gfinity is hosting a Forza tournament, let's sign up. Um, another problem, many people just didn't show up. I think 50% of participants who just signed up four weeks before didn't show up. Um, so yeah, just switch off the collisions for those first rounds and, and you can sort out the good ones from the bad ones. And then when you have like the top 40 or something, you can just turn on the collisions and have decent races. Sure, there's still going to be some crashes. But uh, anyway, 
the racing would be better and yeah, that would be less work for admins actually. Now we have the problem, those tournament races are just rivals v2 because you also have to qualify over rivals, you have to be in the top 24 of your region. Sure, it's not as hard, as difficult as um, being in the top 50 overall, but still, if there is someone who's just racing like it was meant to be, like um, separating races from rivals drivers, um, it, it doesn't work anymore like it was meant to be. Separating the rivals from races is probably also one reason why the streams have a very minor viewership compared to um, other tournaments. There are many people who don't care about the races right now because they already qualified over the rivals and other people know that, viewers know that, that their favorite is probably just not going to take part because he's already qualified. And like a lower quality in races is also bad for the viewers, for the viewership overall. I think um, it just looks better in streams, also like from a marketing communication point of view, when you always have those best players in streams. I understand that they want to have more finalists to probably attract more people for Forza Esports, for um, their brand. That's totally understandable. But I think um, separating rivals and races is not the right way to do it. Just have a rivals event for like two or three days like it's now. Um, take approximately 200 persons, 200 drivers to get into a tournament system, a race system with heat races, maybe one 1v1 round before. Get a decent seating before um, related to the rivals positions and then yeah just just give us points in the end and um, at the end of the tournament you have many of the very good people um, in the final races in the weekly final races and you still get more participants in the end more finalists and yeah still very good racing and then you can still have this regional split but watch out, we need more Europeans, then North Americans, followed by South Americans, Oceania and Asia, I think. That's probably the right row. And one more short approach. Um, it's related to the point system of the rivals path at the moment. Um, I don't think it's not pretty perfect to just have a difference between the first and 12th position and then from 13th to 50th you get the same position. Sometimes there is a margin of like 7 or 8 tenths between 13th and 50th and they still get the same points. So the motivation for people who are always driving around position 20 is just not there, you know. They're driving 20 or 30 laps and then they're done. So some kind of grading from 1st to 50th would be nice. Um, if this system will be used again. Phew. This lasted longer than expected guys. But I think it's a very important topic at the moment because finally the racing esports is getting some attention again, you know, it's, it's, it's growing. And I think we all have to work together to, yeah, to make it a better esports um, genre and Forza Motorsport especially. And yeah, if there were some misunderstandings, like because of the language barrier, I'm still a German potato, so if there was something you didn't get, you didn't understand, feel free to ask me. Uh, if you disagree, tell me. Let's have a discussion. What are you, what's, what's your opinion? Um, what kind of ideas do you have? And it would also be very cool to probably have an official response to this, maybe. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. And I know it's very difficult to find a common ground between professional players and attracting amateurs to also take part in tournaments and so on. But keep in mind, in all other esports games, you know, an amateur is just an amateur, he's losing against good guys. But in racing, when you drive with those collisions and so on, amateurs can destroy the tournament experience of the professionals. And crashes don't hurt. Besides, turn 10, Forza guys, I'm begging. Please fix the Porsches in-game. I think they're not doing wheelies in real life. Please. And this is it, guys. I need a break now. Let's discuss.